I mean, a couple more initials um, by the name, um, you know, outside of GM, but the uh, role's kind of pretty similar uh, just in terms of the, uh, the way we're building and the way we work. You know, still view Cali very much as my partner. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's been cool uh, through this transition to get to know him, get to know the coaches and what they're looking for um, and how that's going to help us as scouts. Well, I think we're, uh, we're really deep at receiver um, in this draft and, and O-line as a whole, um, which are, you know, two areas that we're going to be, you know, focusing on. Um, but it's a, it's a really deep class, a lot of talented young men, and we're looking forward to uh, meeting with them throughout this process. Again, it's, um, I think from a, if you look at it strategically, it's about, you know, the value, right? So if you're sitting there and there's a receiver there, knowing that there's a deep O-line class, it's like, all right, where can we, you know, supplement this, this position, you know, later? Um, so it's about playing those two parts off of each other, uh, whether that's in free agency as well and um, in, in the draft. So it's about trying to mix and match uh, those two pieces. I like seven, but I'm open. You know, we have to listen um, to any offers that, uh, that may come. You know, our, our long-term goal is to build this football team into a, you know, a consistent uh, winner. And the way you do that is building through the draft. And off of that, you need draft picks to do that. So um, we'll definitely be willing to listen, um, but it has to make sense for us. Not, not really. I would just say, um, you know, my number one thing is, say, adding playmakers. Um, to our team, whether that's offensively, defensively, um, just looking to bring people in that, that love football, um, that want to be in our place. I mean, if you look at the way our coaching staff was built, uh, we got, you know, some of the best coaches available. I think these, a lot of guys had other offers and could have been in other places but chose to be with us. Um, and that's the talent part about who they are. But if you look at who they are as people and their passion for the game, I think it, it resonates and it's going to permeate throughout our locker room. With $90 million in cap space, how much do you Oh yeah, I mean it's it's a lot of cap space. I know that's what you know everyone is talking about um, and how much we have, but we have to spend wisely. Um, you don't want to just load up and just go you know and spend money. You know, again, we're trying to build a long-term, consistent thing, um, and and you you can't do that spending all 90 million out front. We got to be patient. We got to position ourselves that there are going to be guys that come free in June and July, like when we got D Hop. Um, that we have to have the space for um, and be able to afford it. And plus, we have to have money for operating costs moving forward throughout the fall, which, you know, I think for most of the season, we're in the top five um, in having space available. So um, we plan to be active, um, but we, we're going to be patient and, and let everything come to us. Yeah, we have to improve on the team speed. Um, I, I, I mean, I think that's, you know, that's visible, um, and we're going to do that. Um, and the name of the game in this league is speed. I think you guys saw that when we played Miami this year, the, the type of threat that they had, you know, with their fast guys, that, you know, just being able to outflank people with motions and the stress that that causes the defense. So we have to be able to match that defensively, but we want to be able to apply that same pressure offensively with speed. Well, Derek and I had a good conversation uh, on the way out, and he knows where we are and we know where he is. Um, I think you guys that have been around, you know, a year know that we don't really talk about, you know, players' contract status in, in, uh, in public. Uh, but we'll be well positioned to do whatever we need to do. Um, you know, however, when those conversations are need to be had, we'll have them with Derek and his team. Well, I mean, first of all, like Tajay is a dude that we that I just described. Like he's very passionate about football. He loves the game. He's a hard worker, um, and I think you guys that have gotten to know him know that's how he's wired, and you love that about him. Tajay's one of those guys that's always in the building. You know, I know there were a lot of concerns about his knee coming out, and that was the big question this time of year and after we drafted him. But we're talking about a guy that never missed a practice, never missed a game, um, and he's you know, for lack of a better way to put it, he's made of the right. You know, and, and those are the type of guys that we want to have in our program. How much do you have to weigh the sentiment with Derek and the fan aspect of all versus the team value side? I mean, it, it weighs, you know, because I hear that question around town a lot. You know, people will 
come and the first thing they'll say is, hey, we're not going to lose Derek, are we? You know, I think I've probably, in my 12 months on this job, have gotten more Derek Henry questions, you know, than anything. So I understand that piece of it too. But, you know, I, I, have, a, I have a responsibility, you know, to build this team long term. Um, and like I said, we'll, we'll cross that bridge with Derek and his team when we get there. I think it's like with most uh, young quarterbacks, it's getting playing time, you know, being out there. He spent the earlier part of the season as the inactive third, um, and then when he got his opportunity uh, to play, he took off and run uh, and ran with it. So uh, for him, it's continuing to get time on task, um, and especially now coming into a new offense, um, getting him getting him in that, getting him uh, knowledgeable of it. And for Will, it's about creating that consistency. When he was at Kentucky, he had multiple offensive coordinators. I think he may have had the same offense maybe twice, you know, in his career. So I want to be able to create that consistency for him, get him used to making calls, and get him to where, you know, he's making all the calls and checks up front. I think it's I think it's paramount uh, from the simple fact that I'm not designing any schemes or calling any plays. Um, the cool thing that we did is uh, prior to coming here, we had a big profile tape meeting, what we call profile tapes, where each of our uh, position uh, coaches put together what they're looking for, you know, at their respective positions, and it was very, 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 very detailed. And we were in a unique position that all of our scouts, with the exception of two, live in Nashville. So we had everybody come in the building. And we got in our team meeting room, which is the big enough space to hold everybody. And we locked in for, I think we went with, with the uh, offense first. And that was a day of four hours of where we were in the room going through each one. And then we went with the defense second. And then we'll meet with the uh, special teams coaches when we get back. But again, that's all about us getting on the same page. A, being able to speak the same language. But then also us uh, as scouts getting to know what the coaches need to make their scheme successful. Yeah, so it's going to be a little bit of a difference. I think there's going to be some carryover on defense uh, just in terms of structure, uh, but the style will change a little bit. Um, and then I think offensively it'll change, uh, which is where we, you know, you got to give our scouts grace. They've gone from post-draft last year throughout the entire fall of scouting for one scheme, and then now we're asking them to flip, you know, on the drop of a dime and adjust. And so our, our guys have done a really good job, and that's why we felt it was, you know, important for them to be in those meetings uh, to see that, and we're giving them, the, you know, the leeway to kind of go back and adjust their grades a little um, to talk about guys that uh, under the previous uh, regime may not have fit, but they now fit us. Um, I won't get too deep into it um, just because we're a new staff and, you know, nobody's seen us play yet. Um, but there, there, there are subtle differences. You know, like I said, the structure um, of it being an odd front team, a 3-4 team, if you will, is going to be kind of similar. Um, our defense has been good, you know, these last couple years. and It's kind of what the organization has hung its hat on, so we're going to look to keep that going. But there will be some subtle changes that will be noticeable uh, when we get out on the field. What characteristics of offensive linemen do change going from outside zone to well, we got a guy named Bill Callahan, uh, a.k.a. Big Coach, um, who's one of the best in the business. And I, I, I really wish you guys could have seen his profile tape, you know, meeting. It was it was it was it was a clinic, you know, it was a clinic and everyone left out of their minds blown. And coming to the realization that we still got a lot to learn, you know, to come in and, and what it's going to take to play for him. But I think for a, for a guy like that who's been such a strong developer, you know, of talent um, at the O-line position, it, it gives us a, a little leeway, you know, to bring some guys in and, and him having a plan on how to develop those guys and get them out on the field. When you mentioned a guy like that, how much do you weigh, like, his ability to develop talent when you're measuring, like, you know, a, a polished, rated, plug-and-play prospect versus a guy like that? No, I mean, it's, again, it's, it's, it's weighing what's the best option for us now and where we're taking that, right? So you, you would want, if you're, you know, if you're picking in the top ten, you want about as a close to a surefire thing as you, that you can find, um, which we won't know that for another three years anyway. Um, but then there are spaces later in the draft where, you know, you could take a developmental guy because you know you have someone that could develop them. You mentioned a couple times having uh, all your scouts clones. Is there, is there a downside to that where they're not kind of out in the middle of their territory on a more 
regular basis? No, I mean, I, that's a good question. Um, I, I would say no just because of, the, of what social media is now. Um, and the, just the, the way you can have, you know, access to information, you know, on your phone. Um, but most of those guys, you know, they, they live in Nashville, but they spend a, a great amount of time in their areas. Um, but I, I, don't think it, I don't think it hurts us at all. Back to the offensive line, are there guys that are holdovers here maybe that get a new lease on life under Bill that maybe uh, didn't quite fit or didn't quite perform the way they needed to? Yeah, well, we have a lot of guys under contract <laughs> that were here last year um, that will get the first opportunity to work with Coach Callahan. Um, but just like anything else, we're going to look to continue to add to that room uh, that allow us to get the best five on the field. you expecting Andre to get that Well, again, I don't. I've never been in a draft room with Coach, um, with Big Coach, and how he sees it. But um, you know, definitely take his uh, take his advice. You know, but ultimately, when we build it, we're going to build it for the best way of the entire you know organization, and not just so much focus on on him and what he's looking for. Are you expecting two minutes left? You expecting Andre Dillard to be part of the, the guys to get an opportunity under Callahan? Well, again, we're you know we'll cross that bridge when we get there. You know, just again, staying consistent about keeping family business in house. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's documented Dre didn't play as well as he probably would have wanted or the way we want it. Um, but nonetheless, he's still a talented guy that has some physical traits that you just c you can't find. How do you like where you are playing at the receiver position and the chance to attack that maybe both in Well, I mean, if you look at uh, where Cali comes from, you know, right, you have three to four guys that are, that are in there uh, a lot. Um, and that are that are producers, and that, that's an, uh, the receiver room is where we're going to continue to look to add some playmakers. Um, like I said before, we're just we're looking to add playmakers, you know, on both sides of the uh, ball. We need to have people that can put the uh, put the ball in the paint, you know, and score points for us. And we need people that can take the ball away and create more opportunities for us to score. Receivers, Brad, uh, Brad, one of the things that you talked about when you first hired, before you hired Cali, after the Rabel fire, was that the vision. You didn't say what it was, did Can you talk about it now that you made the Yeah, so our, our number one thing, again, is going to come back to getting the right people um, in the building. And like I'll forever say, you look at how we built this staff, it's going to be how we're going to build our football team with the right people. But, but there's an acronym I like to use, FIT, F-I-T. And where applicable, we want to be fast, instinctive, and tough. You know, if you look at a, a position like O-line, D-line, you don't necessarily have to be fast. So that F, you know, transitions to being fundamentally sound. And so we think those are the three things that you're going to need to, to build a good football team moving forward. You know, either being fast, instinctive, and tough, or fundamentally sound, instinctive, and tough. When you prioritize the people over the players sometimes, or, or having a combination of both, what things do you guys do in your meetings with these players to get to know that person and come away with your feeling of who they are? So it starts with taking advantage of the time, right? You only get 20 minutes here. Uh, to spend with them. So, you know, staying away from the, hey, where are you from? Where'd you go to high school? We have that information written in front, right in front of us. Let's get to the questions that we really need answered. You know what I mean? If we're talking work ethic or if they have any quote unquote red flags, that's here. And then also being able to get those, uh, get those same meetings in top 30 when we bring them in our building. And that way you have them for a whole day and even visiting with them, you know, uh, maybe at their pro days or prior to their pro day. So getting as much exposure to the person, the tape is the tape. We've seen it. We've seen it in the fall. We've, you know, we're watching it uh, to this very day. But getting as much exposure to the people is going to help us. Uh, it's been incredible. Uh, as you guys know, Ran, Ran's a, a relationship builder. It's kind of his superpower, I like to say. Um, but us being on the same page, if, if you're on the same page with the, the front office and the coaching staff, uh, you can really do a great job finding the right people and right players to, to fit your team uh, when everyone's looking for the same thing. And so that part's been really fun. Um, I enjoy being around Rand every day and, and Chad Brinker too. Those between me, Rand, Chad, uh, and Anthony Robinson, we probably are in and out of each other's office um, probably 10, 12 times a day. I mean, we're always talking, going back and forth, um, but it's been a really, really fun partnership to build, a relationship to start to grow with, and uh, it's, been, it's been a blast. Uh, obviously, coming from Cincinnati, heavily, heavily involved in the draft process. Um, that's how they've operated for a long time. Uh, I think it's been a huge benefit to me. 
uh, being involved in that process the way we were, uh, being in all those draft meetings, in the draft process, in the evaluation process. Um, that's an area that I feel that I've really grown over the years of being there, and I think it's a huge help to me currently uh, being involved in that. So we'll have a, we'll have a, uh, uh, we have more people obviously uh, in Tennessee than we did in Cincinnati, and so I'll lean on those guys heavily as we get started. Um, but our coaching staff will be involved. We're going to have great conversations. It's still going to be a collaboration um, because a lot of times coaches see things uh, in a different light than scouts, and it really allows you to make sure uh, you are evaluating the whole picture and selecting the right player. And so uh, you want the coach's input. You want the scout's input. Uh, you want everyone to feel like uh, their conversations, uh, their opinions are being heard and they're being discussed. Uh, and then on top of that, they're, you're listening too. There's, that's a big part of it. So uh, I'm really excited about how we've been, how we're set up and, and how it's going to work in this draft process. Brian, going back a couple of years ago, you worked with Alex Van Pelt. Just how would you describe him as a coach? And what do you remember from that experience? Uh, Alex is unbelievable. Um, I was with Alex for a year. Uh, really, really sharp. Obviously has the playing experience to, to back up a lot of things he said. Worked with a great quarterback in Green Bay. A great feel for offensive football, and I think what you'll love about Alex is um, he's got a great personality, and he's he's a he's outstanding when it comes to building relationships with the, the coaches and the players. Um, players love playing for him, being around him. I think he's going to be. Uh, I think he's a great coach personally. I, I really enjoyed my year with him, and then obviously my dad's been with him for three years, and uh, he would say the same things if you asked him. So really, really top-notch person and coach. What is Um, that first year, I think it was great because he had a relationship with Andy Dalton, uh, and uh, some of the quarterback footwork was new for me. He had done things a little bit differently, so that was really fun to, to get to hear about that process and uh, and how effective it had been for Andy uh, late in his career. So that was probably one thing I could point out for you. Ryan, we're going to talk about in his interview wanting to bring in a playmaker, and with this wide receiver class being yep. so deep and having a lot of different varying talents, what are you looking for in this class to bring in and add to this team that isn't already there? Yeah, I think there's an element of, of explosiveness, of speed that, that we can add that would help us. Um, this is a really fun class of, of players, really from the top part of the class all the way down to the bottom. There's, there's going to be good receivers, I think, you'll find that will come off the board in the second, third, and fourth rounds that I think will be uh, contributors for some teams. So it's a deep class. Um, there's really a lot of variations of, of player. Um, there's guys that are good with the ball in their hands. There's guys that are really fast. Um, there's guys that are big and strong. So there's a good mix of, of talent that fits. And um, when you're building the receiver room, you're trying to collect a little bit of all of those things. And so um, it's a fun class to evaluate. And, and hopefully we can find a couple guys that fit us. Have you, have you talked about how the scouting has a lot more Yeah. Oh, it's a huge, it's a huge part of the process uh, in educating what we're looking for. And I think Rand might have mentioned it. I've mentioned it once or twice before. But uh, when you set up these position criterias uh, and you set up these profile tapes of, of what you're looking for, uh, it gives those guys a, a clear vision. Uh, into what they are out scouting for. So when they're on the road, when our pro scouts are looking at free agents, uh, it gives everybody a, a pretty clear avenue of, of what we're looking for. And I think that uh, that's our job as coaches is to help uh, inform that. And then it's their job as, uh, as evaluators to evaluate it. Um, and there's going to be times where we love a guy and, and maybe the, the evaluation side feels a little differently. And so our job is always going to be to make sure we have those conversations and determine uh, which player fits us best. But our job as coaches is to point them in the right direction. Uh, it would be really hard for me to, um, to, to compare Jamar to anybody but Jamar. Um, he's, he's, he's sort of his own animal, if you will. He's... He's incredibly talented. There's not many receivers like him in football. Um, so to compare anybody to him, I think, would be unfair. Um, I do like uh, some of the traits that Traylon has shown on tape. Uh, there's some things that I'm excited to work with. Um, and then he's got to do his part when it comes down to the to taking care of yourself and making sure he's ready to roll when we start. Um, but but talented player and one that's got uh, some development to go. I, I would say Jamar's development is, is uh, in a whole different stratosphere. He didn't need a whole lot of it. Um, but... Again, I, I'm excited about what Traylon could bring for us uh, once, once he comes in the building. Where do you think you are with, you think you are with team speed? Team speed, um, you can never have enough of it. So uh, we'll be looking for plenty of it. I think we need to be faster. We need to be more explosive. Um, 
that's always going to be part of it. And you always want to have a good mix. You're going to have guys that, that can win in the physical battles in the 50-50 balls uh, in the contested catch range. Um, but you also need guys that can stretch the field and threaten the defense. And those are things that we'll be looking for, uh, obviously, in the free agency and draft process coming up. Right. That whole conversation, yeah, I, I mean, it's you want guys that can carry the ball, uh, you want guys that can protect, and you want guys that can be dynamic out of the backfield. Um, sometimes that's one player, sometimes that's three. I think what's happening is is that's that division of labor uh, is being divided up amongst that room. So you're getting two and three guys that are contributing more uh, than maybe just one guy all the time. And so. I don't think there's a devaluation of the running back position. I think the division of labor has been separated um, a little more. So uh, that's probably the best way to say that. There's, there's, you have to have good backs. Um, there's really no way around it. Obviously, there's a, there's a positional spending that goes with that. But uh, to have good running backs, ones that can protect, ones that can win routes in the pass game, can catch, ones that are explosive. And then you got to have guys, too, that uh, sometimes when you need two yards, they're, they're going to pound for two yards and, and make it hard on a defense to tackle them. So. Uh, I don't devalue the running back position. I know how valuable it is. You just have to have a lot of different types of them, uh, ultimately, when you're building that room uh, for your team. Yeah, it's um, yeah. He's I've I've reached out. Um, I know our, our Jo's reached out as well. Um, but you know he's he's going through. He was at the Pro Bowl. I didn't want to bother him. There's a lot of stuff going on. Super Bowl. Um, but I think that there's a. a a great relationship with him and the organization um, that, I, that I know that he's always going to have uh, the Titans in his heart. So uh, whatever that looks like moving forward, we'll keep working through it. But um, I know what he means to the, to the city and to the team, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know him. Yeah, Colt, uh, Colt uh, is, is a really young kind of dynamic special teams coach. Uh, be his first time running the room, but but doesn't lack experience. Played for played for eight years in the league. Um, he's a uh, fantastic person. Uh, love having him in the building. Obviously, he's one of the few guys that I've uh, you know I've, I worked with for the last couple of years uh, out of Cincinnati. So that part's been great. Um, but really, really sharp, experienced uh, in the special teams world. And then you add him with Anthony Levine. Uh, those two guys battled against each other quite a bit as players. And so there's a, a mutual respect there. It's been kind of fun to hear them talk about their battles. But i um, really excited about Colt's addition to our staff. Uh, and then, yeah, the last, really the last thing we have is our strength coach, um, which we'll, we'll jump into after the combine here. Um, we'll start that process uh, next week and, and hopefully uh, have it wrapped up by mid-March, I, I would hope. So um, the most important part is they got to be here for, for the start of the offseason program and get their, their program in place. Um, so hopefully that gets done here pretty quickly. April 8th. Yep. You know, it's, uh, it's no different than being anybody's boss, to be honest. Um, it's been great. Uh, him and I get along really well. Um, there's not a whole lot of, 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 you know, bossing around, if you will. Um, there's not many people that, that are going to tell him how to do his job. He's about as good at it as anybody. So, um, but it, it's been really fun for me. It's been a dream come true to be able to sit and have a cup of coffee with my dad in the morning and, and talk about what we got coming up that day and talk about pass protection and technique and, and hear, watch him do his job too has been really fun. I've never had a chance to do that uh, in, in that element where I'm in the building with him every day. So uh, it's been really, really, really cool for me to, to experience that. It's been, it's been awesome. You know, when I early on in my career, when I was first starting out, he, he had made a very pointed emphasis that uh, that I should try my own way uh, and not work for him. Uh, he never wanted to be one to give me a job. Uh, he felt like it would serve me better if I had went my own direction and, and earned my way through it. Um, I think that was the best advice he's probably given me. Um, it's worked out great that way. I've always wanted to work with him. Uh, never knew if I'd have an opportunity, to be honest. It's one of those um, things when you got guys under contract and we're in different places, never knew if it was going to work. And uh, we had a conversation really the year previous uh, when I was interviewing for a couple of jobs, and, and he had said that we wouldn't work together, that he was very happy where he was at um, and didn't really want to leave and felt like I should do that on my own. But it just timed up great. It's kind of where he's at in his career, the opportunity to have him come to Tennessee, um, 
is is really the timing was perfect. It didn't I didn't really know if he wanted to come or not until I got the job because um, I, I was kind of working off the assumption that he was that way last year where he he wasn't interested. So, um, but thrilled 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 to have him and be able to work with him every day. Um, nothing's easy when when you're in those situations, uh, but but thankfully I think it was such a unique situation for. Um, him and I, and, and for the in the league in general, it hasn't happened ever before. Um, so I, I'm appreciative of, of Cleveland willing to work through that with us. Um, I'm sure, obviously, they didn't want to let him go either, and he was under contract. They didn't have to. So appreciative of, of them understanding and uh, knowing the uniqueness of the situation. But uh, that part's been – it wasn't – no, nothing's easy uh, in the NFL when you're under contract. How do you weigh his ability, how do you weigh his ability to raise the game of guys versus the need for, for maybe a premier talented black player? I'll say this: you, you can never, you can never replace elite talent. Um, you can coach guys. Coaching makes it makes an impact. It matters. Um, but ultimately, the better players you have, the better coach you are. Uh, and so, I, I will never um, pass up on elite talent just because I think we have a great coach. Um, great coaches with elite talent uh, is special. And so we're we're trying to get to that point. Uh, but I will say there's. There is times when you can take players, though, as in, in roles that, you know, maybe not necessarily in the, at the top of the draft or for top dollar in free agency, but um, where you can develop players quickly and they can contribute for you. Because uh, as we all know, you're going to have multiple, uh, uh, multiple sets of players playing up front. Uh, very rarely do you stay with the same five for the course of a season. Um, so that development and that depth is always going to be really important. Uh, and there's nobody better at developing it than him. Yeah, you just know <clears throat> what's coming to you. There's a lot of really um, challenging things that come up in the first year, and, and having been a part of that with Zach and him being open to sharing those experiences has been um, really helped make me feel like I'm prepared for this moment. Uh, it's not been overwhelming at any point. Um, I feel very confident in my day-to-day -day operation, uh, and a lot of that's because of the access that Zach allowed me and the things that he talked about with me. And um, you know, there's going to be adversity that comes, and I think the most important thing I learned from Zach is uh, if you can be yourself uh, and stay the same and be consistent, you're going to have a chance to get through all the things that come your way. Yeah, the quarterback position is, um, if, if we were all great at it, um, you'd probably see a lot more uh, a lot more success drafting them. But um, they come in all shapes and sizes now, and I think that's ultimately what's changed the most is um, there's an open mind to all the different ways a quarterback can play football. There's, there's all different styles. There's all different types. Um, but ultimately, I look for three things, decision-making, timing, and accuracy. Uh, and if you have those things and you're tough, um, generally speaking, you can find a way to work uh, at the quarterback position. But um, it's not an exact science. Everybody looks for things differently. Uh, but I do think everyone's realized that, that there's a lot of different ways the position can be played. Um, and how you let those guys be in position to have success, the, the way that they use Brock in San Francisco versus the way that we use Joe Burrow in Cincinnati are, are, are different. Um, but both of them are equally successful, I would say. So. Uh, a lot of that has to do with what the quarterback does well, um, things that they're very comfortable with I think is important. Um, and I think this, this age of coaching is, is all about uh, making quarterbacks comfortable, taking their feedback, and putting them in position to have success versus trying to make them do something that they're not necessarily good at. I don't know if that fully clears it up, but I would say that's the best way to say it.